we're finally getting into some of the new Pokemon that have returned to Pokemon Scarlet and Violet from previous generations that are going to be major powerhouses. And starting today, we have a viewer request to feature Milotic on the channel, which is honestly one of the most interesting new Pokemon in my opinion. With Milotic's ability competitive, it has a pretty interesting place in the metagame with the option to gain two special attack boosts just because it gets intimidated or icy wind dropped, which are both fairly relevant things in the format. And if you guys enjoyed today's Milotic team, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe for more, and let's try and aim for 30 likes. You guys crushed it on the last couple vids, so I want to see if we can keep hitting our like goal. And with that said, let's get started. So today's team, of course, is going to be featuring nothing other than Milotic, of course, which is going to be rocking out with the competitive moveset with the leftovers item that should be great for checking most different Pokemon due to the fact that Milotic is pretty decent bulk naturally, and with the passive recovery of leftovers, this can take great advantage of Protect. Meanwhile, we have Haze, which can stop a lot of different setup options, and Scald and Icy Wind both are pretty valuable here as well, with Scald being a really strong water type move that can have a 30% chance to burn, and Icy Wind has a 100% chance to drop both opponents' speed by one stage while dealing some nice strong ice damage which can help a lot with the grass types we might be fighting. Overall, this Milotic is a great check overall to a lot of different Pokemon in the current format, and if we were to get up Tailwind, we can even outpace all the way up to Dragapult, which is pretty handy. Speaking of, we do have a Tailwind Roaring Moon with a booster attack set that is meant to try and hit our physical attack bump. Meanwhile, with the speed investment, we can all the way outpace Booster Energy Speed Iron Bundle, with the rest of our investment just going into bulk. Knockoff is a great addition to this Pokemon, allowing Roaring Moon a still current relevant place in the metagame due to the fact they can remove items in a really fast time. And also just with Dark and Flying, you get a lot of strong options that you can currently hit in the format, like your Shivus, Amoongus, Rillaboom, and then other Psychic or Ghost types like Fluttermangle, Dango. Uh, there's actually not a lot of great Psychic types. I guess Furigraph is a pretty good one. Uh, but the point being is it's a really good presence and Booster Attack helps it keep up with the current Power Creep. Speaking of Power Creep, we have one of the best Pokemon that is added to Scarlet and Violet being Ogre Bomb Hearth Flame, with an Adamant Nature set that is also going to be creeping Booster Energy Iron Bundle with the Tailwind Boost. Meanwhile, with the Adamant 156, we hit our Physical Attack Bump with the rest being split into bulk. We have an Ivy Cudgel set with also Wood Hammer, Follow Me, and Spiky Shield. Overall, just a really strong breaker, and with Terrify or Hearth Flame Ogre Pond, you can break both Pokemon in the current format. We do have a Fluttermane up next with enough speed to creep Jolly Ogre Pond with the Fairy Feather, which is going to be essentially just the new reskin Pixie Plate. We have a substitute Fluttermane, which is a little bit different. Typically, they run Gleam, but the team I actually base this off of, which was a Clover Bells team, which I am going to also link down below. I forgot to mention that earlier, but they ended up going with the substitute set on Fluttermane, and I did like this a lot as it does help with a different set of like protect turns for example if i leave this with our next pokemon which is a nice fake out user i can usually try and bait for a dual protect and then get a free substitute with Fluttermane in order to break both opponents easily while it does miss out on having gleam at the same time i think this moveset still does really well and it should break most opponents pretty comfortably with a terra fairy and overall, this is just a really good offensive piece. With our next Pokemon, we have an Assault Vest Iron Hands with Terra Water, uh, with enough speed to try and creep a Pokemon like Zero Speed, Blood Moon, Ursa Luna, and just other opposing Iron Hands, with a ton of speed up investment and enough attack to hit our physical attack bump. Heavy Slam is great for most Fluttermane in the current format, meanwhile, Wild Charge, Drain Punch, and Fake Out are just overall strong in most options. Finally, we have a Landris Therian, which is going to be a much bulkier Scarf set. With speed to creep Dragapult perfectly, we have enough attack to hit our low attack bump at 36, and the rest is just going to go into bulk. This set features Earthquake and Stomping Tantrum, since Earthquake is great next to Pokemon such as Spiky Shield, Ogre Pond, or especially the Roaring Moon with Terra Flying. Meanwhile, Stomping Tantrum is still a great option to single target Pokemon, as well as to have a nice ground stab in case of Grassy Terrain is active. The team is going to be on screen as well as in the description below, and I will link to the Clover Bells video as well. It has a ton of different rentals. I changed a couple speed creeps on this team, but otherwise it's basically the same team that they had ended up making. So make sure you guys check out their video as well. It was really well done, and it helped me understand a lot of the different sets we'll be featuring today. But with that said, let's get started. All right, and we're here using Milotic today, which should be a pretty interesting piece. I think it'll at least be better than the Diplin team, if nothing else. And I feel confident, especially since we did base pretty heavily off of a team that someone else built, which means that it should hopefully be good. Uh, if you guys enjoy, of course, like and subscribe for more, and let's let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. We're taking on uh, Luna, Blood, uh, it's Luna, Blood Moon, Cresselia, Nisui, Alcanine, Urshifu, probably Rapid, Fluttermane, and Rillaboom. I feel like we have a pretty good matchup leading off with Fluttermane Iron Hands. I feel like it's just a really safe lead against pretty much anything they could do. Uh, I'm going to bring Lando in the back. I think it's a good pivot, and it will probably be the Terramon this game, uh, since it does match up really well into 
Harkonnen already, and they don't have Tailwind to make it an actual problem with Hytera. Meanwhile, it's great in Rillaboom, especially gaining the resistance of Hytera. It's great in Urshifu, especially losing the weakness to Urshifu, etc, etc. Like, like, it's just a good mom with Hytera. And I think my final pick here, um, it's definitely either Milotic or Ogre. I think that both do have a really strong merit this game. Ogre, of course, is really good at just breaking through my opponent, and then meanwhile, Milotic, it's great at just kind of sponging hits and then just slowly whittling down. I think both can definitely work. I am gonna probably... I think I'm gonna have to bench Milo game one, um, just because I think that Ogre... Ogre will be, I think, a little bit safer into my opponent. So I am gonna kind of bench Milo game one. I still think it's a good Mon on this team. It just, this isn't the right matchup for it is all, which is fine, honestly. I think I've tried leaning a little bit too heavily into bringing the content Mon to every single game recently. And I think it shows in the Diplin team when that maybe should have been a one game Pokemon. Um, albeit, I will also say that even despite all that, uh, we, we definitely got pretty unlucky with that team for sure. Um, okay, Urshifu Fluttermane. This is perfectly fine. This is actually a very fine lead for us. Um, so looking at this, my play is definitely to go for... Ooh, so they're gonna go for Protosynthesis. Are they special attack or speed? They're gonna be speed, okay. Uh, so I don't think I die actually to Fluttermane, and even still there's a good chance it just goes for Tao. Um, I think I'm gonna go for the Moonblast right into Urshifu, and I'm gonna go for Fake Out into Urshifu. Um, I think that'll be hopefully a better play. Just trying to take out Urshifu turn one. Um, I think there's a good chance that Fluttermane either goes for Protect or it goes for like a Terra Fairy Gleam. And I'm kind of fine with either one. They go for Protect. Okay, perfect. Uh, Shifu might be going for Protect as well, but at the same time, I feel like it could just aggressively... Yeah, okay, so they go for Detect. Close enough. Uh, I could have maybe went for Substitute, but to be fair, it doesn't help a lot into Urshifu if it's Scarf and just goes for Azurgen Strikes. Um, so I, I kind of wanted to still make the, the sequence of plays that I, I was going to do. Uh, this does lead me to believe they're probably Mystic Water, though. Uh, which is perfectly fine. Uh, with the lead that they did, so they didn't lead off with Cresselia like I thought they would. Uh, so I think I do actually need to tear the Fluttermane now, especially with the play they just made. Um, into Terra Fairy. That should help a lot with killing this. And then I think I just go for Heavy Slam into their Fluttermane, now that they can't go for a Protect anymore safely. Um, and we're just gonna kinda hope. So they didn't tear a Fluttermane, which is good. Uh, that means that there's no defensive Terra this thing is taking advantage of, such as like a Terra Water that might gain a resistance. So it's just staying a Fairy type. Urshifu might still Terra. Uh, terra Water Urshifu could still be pretty threatening. The thing is, though, is that I'm not really too concerned that they're burning Terra on Urshifu. Um, they're gonna go for Icy Wind. Ooh. Okay, Icy Wind is actually pretty terrifying, I can't lie. Because that will probably just claim a kill on my Fluttermane now, and that's 100% why they quick tip. Um, so, yeah, Surgeon Strikes. Yeah, my Fluttermane is... That actually did... So, I will say, we're still gonna die, but that did shockingly little. Like, we almost actually took that hit. Uh, which is kind of insane to think about. Like, from very full, we actually probably would have taken that hit. Which is fucking insane. Uh, I can still muscle past Urshifu, thankfully, and though, uh, just considering the fact that my opponent ends up having, uh, just the non-scarf Urshifu, my Ogre Pond should be able to outpace that, and thankfully they can't drop the speed anymore with Fluttermane. That's a completely gone Pokemon for them now. Uh, and frankly, pre-Terra, Ogre Pond is probably better this game anyway, so I'm not really too concerned about having burned anything. We're gonna go into Ogre Pond here though, and I'm probably just gonna look Wood Hammer. I might just draw attack depending on the partner slot. Uh, yeah, ooh, okay. Ursulina Blood, that could be kind of scary. I might need to just deem that more so the threat. Uh, the issue being is that one of these Pokemon probably will just claim a kill on my Ogre, and I'm not really sure which. I can't really spike your shield around Urshifu. I think I'm just gonna take out Urshifu. Um, just because I think there's more of a chance that... Actually, no, I think there's more of a chance that Blood Moon goes for... Actually, I think there's more of a chance that I just go for Terra, to be completely honest. So I'm gonna go for this, and then I'm gonna go for Drain Punch into Ursa. I know it probably will go for Terra. If I had to guess, it's probably gonna be Terra Fairy or Normal. Um, I'm still gonna Drain Punch anyway, because there's no reason to click Heavy Slam until I know the Terra. And then Drain Punch is still at least passive recovery on AV, I'll take a hit. Terra Normal. Okay, perfect. Glad that I made the play that I did. Because uh, Normal was still pretty likely, I feel like. Uh, Fairy could have been, but even still, I've already revealed Heavy Slam. I don't think it's exactly, like, the strongest play in their toolkit. Oh shit, I forgot this ogre is actually slower than she could. Um, well, they had no way of knowing that, to be fair. And even still, they made the wrong play for that. Uh, so thankfully, I'm kind of fine. Um, Woodhammer will massacre this Urshifu, though, so I should be pretty good in that regard. Even if they do end up being like a Focus Ash set, I can kill it on the next turn. Yeah, I can kill it on the next turn with, uh, with Landers. So I'm okay with that. Uh, meanwhile, my Iron Hands should be able to pick off the Blood Moon, barring some sort of speed boosted set. Ooh, they're speed boosted. Okay. Um, well. Actually, that's kind of fine. That's actually very fine. Um, alright. So I think I just need to go for... I need to definitely go into Landorus. 
And I need to go for the Ivy Cudgel into Blood Moon and then just go for Rockside and Landers. Um, Rockside and Landers should be able to at least pick off the Urshifu, obviously, as well as the fact that it will get some good chip on the Blood Moon, since that is now no longer ground resist. And then meanwhile, going for this should allow me, uh, with the Ivy Cudgel, should just allow me a high damaging move that will not take any recoil of any kind. Uh, so that'll hopefully work out a bit better. I could also dual target Blood Moon as Urshifu, yeah, Urshifu likely does detect. The issue being though is that if they didn't, I lose the game guaranteed. So I think this is still my safer play. Blood Moon will probably go for uh, literal Blood Moon this turn, which I'm kind of fine with. I just need to hope for either a flinch or just the Ogre will kill. I don't know if she will, but I mean, we are Adamant Ogre. I don't really need the Calx in that, frankly. Yeah, that does nothing, sadly. Um, Hyper Voice. Okay, so they're Hyper Voice, so actually not going for Blood Moon. This helps a lot, actually. I think I could take that with both my Pokemon, even. Yeah, we can take that. Okay, perfect. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna go for the same play. If my opponent goes for Aqua Jet, then I think I lose. Like, specifically Aqua Jet into, yep, into Ogre. I think I lose. Okay, yeah, unfortunate. I think I literally would need to, like, Crit Flinch into Blood, and I think that's my only chance at winning. Um, and if they have Cresselia in the back, I don't think I can win at all. Uh, which, it is what it is. I think it was at least a Crit. No, it wasn't a Crit. Okay, that was just a good roll. Uh, it's still fine, in all honesty. I think Blood Moon does just kind of win, though. Um, yeah, they're just going to go for Hyper Voice anyway. All right, good game to my opponent. Uh, unfortunate. I don't really think that Milotic fixed the matchup for the record. I think maybe it could have came over Ogre. Uh, but, or actually, maybe it should have come over Landorus. I think maybe over Landorus would have been good. Um, the issue being is I still do think that I valued the pivot from this for, like, Harkonine, especially if Harkonine did go for Terra. Because all the Terra sets, Landers would have probably been better for. But I think I just called the lead wrong, really, if anything. I got too used to playing Cresselia, Blood Moon on ladder, and just was like, oh, okay, well, let's lead off with Iron Hands and Flutter Man. Uh, but it is what it is. Uh, we're 0-1 to start the day off. Very unfortunate. But we're going to get a win in the next match. So we'll see you guys then. Okay, moving into game number two. We're taking on Indeedee, Torkoal, Hisui Lilligan, Ursaluna, in the Hisui form. And then we have Enamor, Styrian, and Perigrath. So definitely a very slow team overall. I think I can actually probably confidently lead off with, uh, let's see, so I don't really feel like Iron Hands is a good lead, their Trick Room options both kind of stop it. And it's not terrible for Lily Cole, sure, but I feel like I just get more mileage out of going with Fluttermane and Ogre Pond here. I definitely do like the idea of going with Milotic in the back. I do think it's actually pretty decent in terms of being just a nice sponge against my opponent's team. And then I think that my final mon will probably be Roaring Moon. They don't really break Roaring Moon that well outside of Enam and the... Outside of a Nam and the Lilligan, but at the same time, I don't know if they're really going to go for the Trick Room out into this team. I could also go with Iron Hands. I think Iron Hands isn't terrible for the record, um, but again, there's so many different ways of stopping priority here, and the biggest benefit that Iron Hands would give me is the priority hits, uh, because otherwise I do need to burn a Terra on it, and it's not terrible with burning a Terra, but when stuff like Hisui the Lilligan can still massacre me with Solar Blade after that, uh, Torkoal could still be packing the Solar Beam technically. Blood Moon, if it is running minus speed, which it very likely is on this team, can just go for like a facade into me. There's a lot of different things that can still shadow me anyway, even with the Terra, so I'm not really going to tempt fate there. Indeedy for a graph. Okay, so they're really trying to go hard into setting that trick in this turn. Uh, perfectly fine in all honesty. I think that my play is honestly just to get up a substitute and then go for an Ogre Pond and probably just go for the Terrifier Ivy Cudgel. Uh, specifically, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to kill Ndidi. I think Ndidi is going to be the scarier mod here. So I am going to go for Substitute, and then I am going to go for the Terrifier Ivy Cudgel. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to go for Terrifier, but I am still going to go for Ivy Cudgel here. I don't know if I'll kill for the... Do I... Actually, that's an important distinction to make. So I do kind of need Ndidi dead. That's the whole point of going for this attack. Ndidi female versus Ogre Pawn. We are adamant. I don't think we're max attack though. We're, we shouldn't be max attack. Yeah, we're 156. Okay. Um, adamant 156. Ivy cudgel. Ooh, yeah. Okay, so we need to go for the Terra. Okay, I need to pop Terra. That's fine. Uh, Terra's still really good, to be fair. I just think that I would have liked to preserve it a little longer. But if it means I can get rid of the follow me Pokemon here, I'll take that. Because Indeedy will be the reason that this matchup is losable. I don't think that for a rig puts that kind of pressure on me, and at least I can still go for stuff like Protect with Ogre to try and preserve it while I weaken things like Torval a little bit. So I'm not really too concerned. And again, Indeedee's really like the annoying support because Follow Me. Okay, perfect. So they were going for Follow Me plus Trickroom this turn. Honestly, fine. Uh, it's another big reason I went for Substitute on Fluttermane because the attack would just pretty much be wasted when Ogre can guarantee the kill actually with this. It's 105 minimum because of the fact that we went for Terrastal. So I'm not really too concerned with Ndidi. It will guarantee die this turn. 
Meanwhile, I'll have Fluttermane behind a sub, which means that my opponent actually cannot kill me with Torkoal on the next turn. So what they would probably have to do is they'd probably have to go for like a Gleam on Ferrigarath, which I'm okay with. Ooh, they're going for Imprison. I'm so okay with Imprison, actually. That is very fine by me. I think they lost the game doing that, in all honesty. They might have? I don't know. Maybe I'm overcounting it, but I feel like they lost the game doing that. Um, okay, well, regardless, I think that my play is going for, let's see, uh, Ferrigarath. Let, let me check Ferrigarath. I would actually need to dual target this, um, so I'm just gonna go for the Moonblast here, and I'm gonna go for the Ivy Cudgel here, and I'm just gonna take out Ferrig. It's in prison guaranteed, so we should be able to pressure that. If Nam is going for like an Earth Power, I'm kind of okay with that. They're definitely Fizz Death. They're definitely Fizz Death. I have that or Offensive, but either way, I kill. Okay. Um, they are going to be Citrus, it's perfect, uh, because Ogre should actually still guarantee kill. Uh, yeah, Ogre does 79% minimum to max Fizz Death, so this is a guaranteed KO right here. Uh, perfect, okay, okay. And then, at this point, nothing can actually stop Mylantic. Like, Mylantic guarantees the win. I know that, like, Ogre Pwn and Fluttermane put on so much early game pressure, but even if my opponent does manage to kill either one with an amp, which there's a good chance they could. Yep, Earth Power and Ogre. Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, that's a kill. You know, Inam is so offensive that, that honestly, I don't know if they could even matter. We're not that bulky. I'll be at, there's some bulk on this ogre. Uh, it's, I think we're 148. Yeah, we're 148. Honestly, I don't even know if that was a roll because Enamorous Theory is just that fucking good. Yeah, Enam, if, I mean, if that's Specs, yeah, it's a guaranteed KO right there. We'll go to Milo because uh, Milo actually gets a really free muddy water here. Um, well, actually, I think it's Surf to be fair. Um, yeah, it's Scald actually. Okay, well, Scald is still fine. I'm not really too concerned. The point being is it gets a really free water type move here, uh, which should be good. We're gonna dual target the Ursa because actually no, no. we're gonna dual target into. I'm gonna dual target in Nam. Ursa's not that threatening right now, in all honesty, and I have no reason to attack Ursa this turn. So we're gonna kill a Nam because that's the mon that could actually pressure us offensively. Now there's a good chance that Specs, and, and honestly, with how much that took from Moonblast, I would be completely shocked if that was Assault Vest. Uh, Ursa's gonna go for Earthquake here. Honestly, not a big deal. It's just gonna break Flutter Sub, which will be annoying, obviously, but Milo will chew this pretty comfortably. Um, meanwhile, Enam's probably locked into Earth Power. Again, I cannot imagine that's not a spec set. Um, Gleam. Okay, so that's not specs. Holy shit, Enam's just weaker than I thought. Um, Milo should still comfortably take this, though. Yeah, as we see, Milo still comfortably takes. And then I can probably just go for, like, a Moonblast right into a Nam, and then just go for Scald into Ursa, get some good damage off, and then at that point, I mean, I won't guarantee kill, but I'll put this in pressure, like, in range of where my opponent can guarantee not beat me. Because, again, Milo will just get off too much damage. Protecting the Nam is fine. It's not really a huge concern, because no matter what, uh, the Ursa will probably KO both my Pokemon here. The issue being is that it's going to take way too much damage, and I can definitely bully the, the end game here. Um, okay. So Scald will go off, and yeah, that brings it down, uh, it's not bad. Kinda wishing I could Gleam on Flutterman at this point, to be fair, but it could be worse, it could definitely be worse. Um, okay. So, definitely unfortunate, for sure, but I can still work around this. Um, I am forgetting what my last one is, I think it's Roaring Moon. So that means I do need to target into the... Hmm, ooh, okay, this could be kind of a problem. I guess does Roaring Moon die? <laughs> does Roaring Moon die? Um, cause shit. I might actually be fucked. Um, I might be fucked, yeah. Because I didn't protect on Fluttermane. I should, probably should have protected on Fluttermane and honestly keep, kept up a uh, dual position here. Um, well, it doesn't really matter if I do or don't die. I kind of just need to kill a Nam because if Ursa doesn't kill me, that's fine. A Nam is the mon that can't probably protect again though. And I know that a Nam can kill me. So I kind of just need to hope that the bulky, uh, the bulky Roaring Moon will take it. I don't have faith in all honesty, but we'll have to see. Ursa Luna should be able to kill. Yeah, that's that's probably a kill. I will say if they're going for Earthquake, they might not kill. Um, they're gonna go for Terra on Ursa. That's fine. Um, they're gonna go for Terra Fairy. Okay, so they're at least not Terra Stab. That's something. That's definitely something. Um. I can kill a Nam at least. That's a dead mod. If they're going for Earthquake, I might actually be fine. Um, the question is, is are they going for Earthquake again? Cassandra. No, okay, they claim a kill. They guarantee kill. Uh, unfortunate. Damn, okay. So, uh, damn, we're 0-2. I still feel confident the team will round out two wins. Honestly, this was just me misplaying. 
Like, I think this was definitely me misplaying, for sure. I think last game I brought the wrong mons. This game, it was misplaying. I don't know what it is. I think I'm just, I think I'm just kind of rusty right now. Um, but game three, we'll have to polish up. I'm not, I'm not doing another winless vid. Okay, we're taking on a team consisting of Perig, Sylveon, uh, Milotic, Sableye, Ogre Pond, Fire, and then, uh, and then we have the Slitherwing. I forgot what that was called for some reason. Um, in terms of this team, I think, again, that my lead is probably just Fluttermane and Ogre. I think that Milotic is still a decent option in the back line here. Uh, Milotic overall with Scald. I, this this mod is just kind of hard to take out, and it could be decent since the Slitherwing will probably be a good Terra option for them. Um, and then I think I think I kind of want to bring the Roaring Moon. I think Roaring Moon is a really good Terra option. I could also maybe go with Landorus. Uh, Landorus isn't terrible here either. I think I'm going to go with Roaring Moon, though. I think even Roaring Moon, honestly, on lead could maybe be good. I could force, uh, I think specifically the play is going with Roaring Moon and Ogre. I think that might actually be a little bit better uh, because I can just Terra Roaring Moon immediately. And then that plus Ogre Pond should be able to do some really strong damage. This will definitely be a non-Terra Ogre Pond game in my opinion. Um, there there are very few leads I think that I do Terra. Uh, and then I don't really need the Sylveon's Terra. Sylveon doesn't need Terra. Um, so we're gonna, we're gonna have to see what happens. I feel confident that we can beat this team. I feel very confident. Milo takes Sylvia. Okay. Uh, this is definitely a, a lead where I have to tear the, tear, tear the Roaring Moon here. Um, but Roaring Moon should be able to break my opponent pretty confidently. I'm not really too concerned. I think I just go for the Wood Hammer right into Milo and then I go for the Acro into Sylveon. Uh, let me just double check really quickly that I do KO Sylveon with that uh, 164. Because I don't want to... Let's see, Protosynthesis attack into Sylveon. Then we go for Terra Flying. Um, okay, so that actually doesn't carry to the KO. Um, we are going to go for Terra Flying here, for sure. And then I think I'm just going to go for the... I, mean, I don't really fear Sylveon, in all honesty, with uh, with my Terra. So I think I do still go for the Wood Hammer right into Milotic. And then I just claim my kill. They're going to withdraw Milotic, that's perfectly fine. Um, their whole team, besides Slitherwing, does take a lot from this. Slitherwing, okay. Still very fine. Uh, because Sylveon has no way of dealing enough damage to me this turn that will actually make it so I cannot just pressure Slitherwing on the following. So I'm pretty fine here. I'll just go for Spiky Shield and then Protect most likely because even if they set up, it's not a huge concern. Slitherwing is pretty easy to take out in my opinion. Uh, and then if they go for like a Terra Fire, that's fine. Milotic can sponge that afterwards and I'll just double in. Wood Hammer will do some okay damage. That actually does more than I thought. I kind of thought it would do a little bit less, so we'll take that. And then Acro should deal probably about like half to slip, like, actually no, it'll probably deal about 80. Um, oh shit, so we got the roll. Either that or that Sylveon was not max HP. Um, but for context, uh, oh no, this is, uh, this is Jolly. That actually makes way more sense. We're out of it. Uh, yeah, 92% min? Okay, that's a way better roll. Uh, yeah, that was a literal 50-50 then. Uh, but still a roll. We still got it. I'll take that. I'll definitely take that. Um, actually it was slightly above half, but doesn't really matter, honestly. Um, let me check Slitherwing real quick, because I might just stay in. Um, so they're weighing with defensive Terra. Uh, yeah, it's a Terra Fire actually should still probably fold to this at this point. It should be a guarantee KO. Let's we'll go for that, and then I'll go for Wood Hammer. I do need Milotic to be kind of gone. That's really the only way that my Milotic wins. Um, but after that point, they, they don't really deal a lot of damage. The best way that they would have, though, is like, I guess Terra Grass Slitherwing, which fine, that still folds. Ooh, they're Terra Ground. Um, actually, let's Terra Rock. Terra Rock will actually shoot that pretty well. Um... So, yeah, that Acrobatics is turning into a pretty nice resist for them. They'll actually be able to potentially claim a kill on whatever Pokemon they want with that. Especially if they have Terra Blast, or like some sort of actual like offensive rock move. Uh, thankfully, my Milotic is pretty opened up to KO this mod though, and Slitherwing doesn't get a cross move, I don't think it does. Uh, so I'm not too concerned, but definitely at least could have been really scary. Got Terra Blast, it's a free KO for them. Um, and I can't really stop that. They're gonna go into Roaring Moon though, thankfully. So I'm kind of set. Oh, that actually didn't kill. I'll be honest, I kind of anticipated it too. Let's figure out what their last mod is though. I'm probably going to go for a Tailwind this turn. Sableye. Okay, I'm going to go for Tailwind this turn. Just for the sake of... Uh, actually... Do I need to? I don't know. I don't know if I need to, in all honesty. I think I could just go for the Acrobatics. I think I could just go for the Wood Hammer here. Um, I think they just, yeah, they just forfeit. Okay, unfortunate. We got a win at least. Um, I want to get a win with Milotic though. So game number four, I'm promising you guys, game number four is the Milotic game. We're going to fight some Intimidate Mon and we can finally make the strategy work. I feel confident. Milotic is still really good. I still think the team is even really good. I just, 
I don't know what it is. I've been butchering wins today. Uh, but besides the point, we'll see you guys in the final team of the day. Uh, peace out, guys. Moving on to our final team, we have a pretty interesting game. Uh, we're taking on Wellspring Ogre, Sinistra, Pachi Risu even, which is really cool to see. Uh, Urshifu probably single on this team, actually. I think that single is a lot of merit as a partner for Sinistra here. Uh, especially with the fact that I already have Wellspring for a water type anyway. Though, it still wouldn't be the worst partnership. Uh, and then they have Iron Hand and the later Asterion. Uh, definitely a Milotic game. I don't know if I want to lead Milo, but it's not terrible. I think they might lead their Landorus, and that could benefit a lot. Um, but I also feel pretty confident in the Iron Hand's lead. I think I just lead off with Flutter, and... Hmm. Let's see. So I think I lead off with Flutter and Moon, in all honesty. I think Flutter and Moon could be decent. Or even, uh... Actually, no, I kind of like the idea of leading off with Milotic and Roaring Moon. We'll go with Fluttermane in the back, and then I kind of like the idea of going with Last Mon Ogre. Uh, Last Mon Ogre can be really good at just breaking through the team late game. Uh, I could also go with my own Landorus. The issue being is that my own Landorus isn't great without Terra, and I think that my Ogre can still put up a lot of pressure into this matchup without Terra. Uh, so we'll just kind of have to see. I think that leading off with Moon, though, should give me a decent out, uh, because if they go for the Intimidate, for example, with Landorus on turn one, and they just leave with it, I should be able to gain a nice speed boost here, which should allow my Tailwind to get up guaranteed, even if they are Scarf Landorus, without the need to burn a Tyra to maybe preserve health, which is going to be really huge. Uh, Pachirisu and Urshifu. That is going to be Urshifu single. Okay, so I called it right at the very least. Um, Honestly, still very fine, because I don't really need to Tyra my Milotic into this, because it just doesn't really matter. Uh, meanwhile, my Roaring Moon can definitely Tyra, but the issue being is that I think I would rather go for an Icy Wind here, um, actually, I could Terra this. I feel like I could Terra a Roaring Moon pretty confidently, but I feel like they're gonna just go for Follow Me here. So I'm actually just gonna go for a Tailwind. Am I gonna go for Tailwind or Knock Off? I feel like either way I'm kind of fine. Um, let's see. So I'm gonna go for- I'm definitely gonna go for an Icy Wind with Milotic. I think that's definitely a safe play. And then meanwhile, I think I'm gonna go for a Knock Off here and just Massacre the Pachirisu so it can't follow me any later turns. They actually didn't go for Follow Me, so they're going for like a Super Thing or something. Which is still fine. Um, Urshifu is going to go for Drain. That might not kill. Yeah, we just barely take that. They probably will. If they're going for that, I can't imagine that they're going to have, like, a, they're, they're probably a Focus Sash set if they're going to go for Drain. Can't imagine they're Band-Aid and going for that. Uh, Icy Wind should at least kill Pachi. Hopefully, kill Pachi. Thank God. Okay. And then Urshifu is now slower as well. So I can go for Tailwind very confidently at this point, um, and then just gain my speed back. They can't kill me with Sucker Punch that way as well, which is huge. Uh, and then I can proceed to go for Scald into Urshifu, which is probably now going to be Sash Broken as well. Uh, with the minus one, my Tailwind Milotic should now pace it, which is good, even despite the pair. Uh, they're going to go for Iron Hands here. Ooh, okay, so we're going to probably actually have to go for Protect. Um, I could go for Dual Protect in all honesty. I could even also just go for a Scald here and punish my opponent going for a, going for a Fake Out. And I think I like that play a little better, I can't lie. I think I definitely like that play a little bit better. Uh, because this should hopefully take advantage of my opponent trying to just pick off my moon here. Uh, which is pretty likely in my opinion. I think there's a good chance they do this. Yep, fake out into moon. Perfect. Okay. So, my Milotic is pretty safe. Uh, the Wicked Blow on our Shifu will not deal enough damage to KO. I'm pretty confident in that. They're gonna go for Drain Punch, actually. Even better. Drain Punch crit. Okay. So that actually, yeah, I mean, that's about as much as Wicked Blow would have done. Um, the issue being is that they now get recovery, which is... Definitely not as good as I could have had it, but hey, it's still fine. Uh, Milotic clearly was not doing enough damage because they're not minus Fidef, which I could have maybe gained if they were going for close combats. Might have benefited that a little bit better, in all honesty, but hey, it is what it is. We'll go for another Scald into our Shifu here, and then I'm going to go for a Tail in this turn and just try and... Actually, I could also just go for Acrobatics to claim my kill. I think there's a good chance I could detect, um, and in all honesty, I think I benefit a lot from Tailwind later on. Like, I think Tailwind actually is, like, my make or break here. Um, so, yeah, I'm gonna go for Tailwind here. I know I can claim the Airshifu kill, but I would rather not do so just yet. Just because I don't see it as too much of a threat. Um, and again, we'll be able to get a Scald off. That actually does a lot of damage. That does a ton of damage. Can we burn? No burn. Okay. Um, my actually takes that anyway. So, they're gonna be able to pick one Pokemon guaranteed with the Iron Hands. The issue being is it's only one. Uh, if they pick Milotic, then that's great. And if they pick Moon, that's also fine. Uh, because moon moon going down is probably better for me. Uh, really, Milotic only hurts me if it gets full powered. Um, but I'm kind of fine with this. Perfect. Okay, so we're gonna go into Wellspring. I'm uh, not Wellspring. Uh, Heart Flame, and I'm just gonna go for the Ivy Cudgel right into. Actually, I might go for what'll do more. I think I think Ivy Cudgel will do slightly more to Iron Hands. Let's see. So Iron Hands versus Ogre Pond. I 
Flame. Terra, um, yeah, it's a Hearth Flame. Uh, Ivy Cudgel does slightly more. We'll go for Scald into Rashifu here. And then I'm gonna go for Terra Fire, and I'm gonna go for Ivy Cudgel right into Iron Hands. And we're just gonna claim our kill. They're gonna withdraw Rashifu, that's perfectly fine. Uh, please go into Landers, please go into Landers, please go into Landers. Fuck yeah! I can put it on my thumbnail now. Mm, super glad. I know it doesn't matter at all, but, like, I can put it in my thumbnail now. So I'm very happy. <laughs> they are probably gonna go for the Iron Hands. The, uh, the, uh, the Milotic with the Iron Hands. I cannot imagine that they'll let this just slide. But killing the Landers is also really huge here. That actually is great, because they've now lost... I mean, we'll lose, like, one attack stage. We're actually gonna guarantee not kill Iron Hands. But for, actually, we're gonna guarantee to kill it, which is still fine. Um, issue being is they can now maybe Drain Punch past me, which is whatever. I don't really care. The Letter Man will be able to come and pick this off very confidently later on. Um, Ivy Cudgel will still do a ton of damage to Iron Hands, though, so I'm not too concerned. Um, and if we crit, we guarantee kill anyway. Yeah, that's about half. Okay, I'll take it. So, uh, they're either going... So, Landorus for one just guarantee drops. That's a guarantee gone, Landorus. Crit did not matter. We're plus two Milotic. Um, this thing is kind of just a demon. Uh, so, they can either claim the Milotic that they just boosted, or they can... Yeah, they're gonna claim the Milotic. So, it means, that means they're not gonna get much recovery back. Uh, meaning that I can just go into my Fluttermane now. Um, and Fluttermane should be good. Um, Fluttermane versus Urshifu. No. Let's see. So we have... We're like what? Uh, we're 36. Okay, 36 is fine. Um, and then... Sorry, I'm just figuring out what my better play is. So Moonblast should deal a good amount of damage. Um, Moonblast will probably be my safer play in all honesty. Because that should, like, pretty much guarantee kill. Uh, the issue being is that if, if this thing is, like, really bulky like hp wise i might not kill with uh i mean i kill with ogre but i can definitely kill with uh i can definitely kill with flutter pretty confidently they'd have to burn a terra which i do think they will for the record i think they'll burn a terra here um but the issue being is that if they burn a terra i lose ogre if i attack with ogre um i think i can at least preserve one of these and then pick it off on the following turn anyway if the iron hands terras and i attack with flutter main uh because really the scary thing here is the Iron Hands okay. They're actually gonna Terra Shifu. Well, that's way better for me. They're gonna be Terra Steel. Well, thank god I Ivy Cudgel. Thank fucking god I Ivy Cudgel. Uh, because that mod is gone. That mod is very gone. Um, they're gonna go for Detect anyway. Uh, I, it's so weird. I don't know why people go for Terra and Protection at the same time. I feel like they just kind of telegraphs what, like, anything that you could have maybe had suspense-wise. Like, for example, let's say they just went for Wicked Blow this turn into my Flutter main. They could have, if I did target them with Moonblast, they could have actually put on pressure and then, uh, and then been able to not only take the Moonblast that they were four times weak to, but they could have then also proceeded to kill me. Um, not that, like, I'm sure there are times and that's, like, a viable play, but at the same time, though, I cannot imagine there is ever an opportunity where you would genuinely want that to be your situation. At least not off paper. Let me know down below, actually. That's gonna be the new comment question of the day. Let me know if there's ever a time that you genuinely think that it is viable. Like, like an actual, like, give me a reason why. Because this is me genuinely asking, not trying to, like, be an asshole but let me know down below is there an actual like benefit to going for terra and protect at the exact same turn because personally i think it's one thing for like a wide guard where you know you can still get hit by certain attacks like with wide guard terra seal hariyama if let's say you were doing that to avoid like a moon blast that's a fine play i mean solely like regular protect or detect unless if your opponent is like an urshifu or something of that sort when is it a viable time because i am genuinely curious because the only time i could think of is urshifu um, but if you enjoyed, regardless, uh, like and subscribe for more. Um, we're going to be back tomorrow with an Alola Ninetales team. It should be very exciting. Uh, so if you want to stay tuned for that, of course, make sure that you hit that subscribe button and stay up to date. Uh, we've had a lot of people check out the channel recently. I very much appreciate all the new subscribers who have been coming in. Uh, and speaking of, if anyone is a new subscriber, of course, make sure to check out the channel memberships for just a couple hours a month. We have two different tiers, one tier for $3 a month where you guys can get some bonus content. Uh, we're going to be having actually a members poll going up in a couple hours for our next members discussion video. Uh, but you guys also get weekly live team builders for our upcoming draft league that we have just started week one of the MDA. That's where the DNC video just went live for it. And week two, we're taking on QSN for that. For $5 a month, you guys can also get some bonus team help for anyone once a month i will personally review a team and send you back personalized notes on my suggestions for it as well as even showing different ways to use the team if you're interested so make sure as well to consider that tier as well but our current channel members are zeke zero mia tia mueller rao sakura obo johannes b to double endless gadgets bam bambi josh gay ultra player and incog m your support is greatly appreciated and i appreciate your guys going the extra mile with that said though i'll see you guys in tomorrow's video until then peace out guys